So the only thing that I really want to share with you today is um, is this idea of uh, of really kind of sprinkling throughout all of your marketing funnels uh, the the key emotions that drive your prospects to buy. And the thing that I just want to clarify for you, like as I've been working with um, clients, you know, coaching program clients and, um, and, you know, agency clients and whatnot, one of the things that I'm kind of being asked more and one of the things that I'm finding that I'm addressing more with, um, with clients is this idea of, of the big number one kind of dominant resident emotion and how does focusing on one, that dominant resident emotion, tie in with all of these other kind of secondary emotions that we know push people to, to act, right? All these secondary emotions that are triggers. And so it's a very easy answer. I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to get this, okay? But this is a very easy answer and a very easy concept um, for you guys and gals. And here it is. Number one, when it comes to the big idea behind your funnel, we are focusing on one emotion. It, all of you should remember from the partnership coaching program from, uh, from module one, this idea that, you know, the big idea is made up first and foremost of one, right, of one idea. And it's kind of funny just as a side note, right, just as a side note, that's one of those things that um, possibly more so than any other aspect of the um, of the big idea, right? And there's you know there's multiple criteria, multiple components, if you will, that make up the big idea. Um, but I think that when I think back, the one that Mark really hammered um, over and over um, and over and and really drilled into me was this idea that it's one one. One idea, right? And one of the things that I see all the time, I see it all the time, are, especially from new clients, are, you know, is this bringing in multiple ideas and kind of di di diluting the idea with multiple ideas, right? They think, you know, most marketers think, and you've heard me say this before, right, this idea that if I have a weak idea, I can strengthen that idea by kind of bringing in an additional idea, right? And my, my marketing funnel, my, my headline, my appeal, my hook will be made up of a bunch of kind of little combined ideas, and, and all of them kind of fairly weak, but together they'll be strong, right? No, that's the opposite of what happens. Every additional kind of idea that you try to incorporate in, right, only weakens it, right? And so it's one idea, right? It's one major promise, right? It, it's, it's one overarching story, right? And it's one core emotion. It's one emotion. What is the emotion, the one main emotion that you are trying to tap into? Is it fear, right? Is it greed? You know, is it under, under those two? And, and most of the big primary emotions or most of the big primary uh, um, drivers, emotional drivers, are going to fall under either, right, greed or, or, um, or fear, right, moving towards positive, moving away from, from pleasure, right? And so you're focusing on one. However, right, however, when you go through your marketing funnel, understand, understand that at different points you are going to, um, you're going to tap into the other emotions, the other secondary emotions, which I'll give you an example in just a second, and, excuse me, and you're going to want to, you're going to want to prod those. Right, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to move them in those those secondary uh, those secondary emotions, right? But when it comes to the big idea, when it comes to the dominant resident emotion, there's one emotion that you're focusing on. In other words, in the idea, in the headline, in the lead of our funnel, right? Whether it's a video, multi-part video, whether it's a, what whatever, you're not trying to appeal to two or three different emotions at the same time. You're trying to trigger one, right? One. Uh, one, but later on in the funnel, for example, when we get into things like, um, you know, the the let's say the the uh, uh, how you convey urgency, or if there's a scarcity element, right? That's tapping into emotion, right? The whole reason why why does the whole why does a scarcity um, play um, why is it effective? It's effective because it triggers this fear of 
loss, right? It triggers a fear of loss. And so, the, you know, it's a feeling. It's an emotion. It works because it triggers an emotion. It triggers a feeling, right? And there are these other secondary um, emotions um, that you want to that you want to um, take advantage of when you can. And, we, and, and if you get a little bit creative, you'll see that you can do this in, uh, in almost any marketing and selling situation, right? And so w- let me give you an example. Uh, and this is one of the things that I'm going to talk about, actually, uh, in much more depth, obviously, at the MFA Live event. But one of those, for example, is, um, is <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, association, um, status, if you will, right? And and so, how can you convey uh, to your prospect this feeling of status um, associated with your product, right? There's you know there's a lot of there's a lot of ways. Like for example, the, you know the first two people in the queue, the first person's Craig, second person is Sharon. Both Craig and Sharon have an information product that they provide, a training course, a, you know, a coaching program that they provide to their respective markets. Craig on mental toughness, right? Sharon on, um, on the development of their, their practice, their, pro, you know, their prosperity as, um, as a coach and, um, and whatnot. And, <clears throat> excuse me, well, of course there's, there is a way to incorporate association, right? Like for Craig, it could be describing the fact that, like, look, it's, you know, you know the highest, you know, the, the top 5% of, of CEOs or top 5% of executives or the people that get the most amount of attention, the most amount of respect when they walk into a room, right, are individuals that have mental toughness. And the individuals that are weak, let's say, right, and, and this is your opportunity to be one of those people, right? This is it's, – it's us painting the picture that you'll now – be one of those individuals that is looked upon as, wow, look at that guy, look at that gal walking in the room, right? And, and just like same thing with, um, with um, Sharon and let's say these, these coaches, these consultants, these individuals that like, you know, we are able to later on in the marketing funnel tap into their need for respect, right? Like, you know, like this idea of, you know, like of, you know, you know, don't be surprised if at your next holiday gathering, right, you're the one that, you, you know, your brother-in-law or somebody in your family is coming over to you asking you for business advice, right? Like that conveys this respect. That conveys admiration, right? That taps into a feeling, an emotion that human beings naturally have, right? And so that is, um, you know, that's, those are what I mean when I say those are the secondary emotions, right? So those are the secondary emotions. And I'm going to hit as many of those emotions as possible throughout the, the marketing funnel at different points. Sometimes you're going to hit those emotions in, you know, in a single sentence, right, those secondary emotions. Sometimes it, it's a couple sentences. Sometimes it's a, it's a paragraph, right? And so, but there's one core dominant resident emotion that you're prodding, that you're stimulating, that you're tapping into, that you're turning the knife, so to speak, into, that drives the idea, that drives the main aspect of your, um, of your funnel. But of course, right, you're going you're gonna to tap into these other, um, you're going to tap into these other emotions. Human beings are complex creatures, right? You don't need me to tell you that. You guys understand that, right? We're complex creatures, right? And so there's no fine line, right? Excuse me, there's no uh, black and white defined line that says like, all right, well, you know, fear ends here and X, Y, Z emotion begins here. So you, you pick the one that, you, you know, the dominant resident emotion, that is what you roll with, but then you sprinkle in all of these emotional triggers, these emotional drivers that move people to act that are really the secondary things that aren't necessarily the main chief emotional reason why somebody would buy something, right? But we know that it moves them closer. It inches them closer. It gives them more of an emotional tug, right, to, um, to, to take advantage of the, um, of the, the, uh, the product. The other thing, or the offer, the other thing is kind of in line with that as it relates to the um, the emotion 
is one of the things that I forget where I was that um, I shared it. Uh, oh, was that this thing that I had to do? Uh, I think it was last week, maybe. Um, and um, and what was I just going to say? I talked about right that like when we're presenting the product, when we're presenting the product, when we're into the selling stage of the funnel right that really what we're doing is really we are selling um somebody we're selling them on the offer we're selling them on the offer right and so it's the feelings that we are generating when we're selling around the offer not just the product we're selling the offer that's a subtle point right that i want you to understand in this context it's another thing that's kind of you know been um been you know that's been on my mind especially like i said since it was this thing that i had a that i had to present right but it's the feeling that they have as it relates to the offer that's why we go the distance with what we say with our guarantee copy our risk reversal copy right because we're trying to right um give them this feeling of comfort that that there is no risk right it's not that there's no risk with the product it's that there's no risk with the offer there's no risk with the offer the thing that we're selling them on is the offer why we say things like you know it's it there you risk nothing today it's why we say things like you don't even have to say um say yesterday just say maybe try it for the next um 30 days only if you love it do you pay anything and then you can keep it for the next six months if at any time within the right we're, what we're, we're talking about is the offer that we're making them and how it eliminates um all risk so that we give them the feeling of comfort going forward with the um with the transaction so hopefully that makes sense it um it uh it is something that uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be talking about and presenting um at mfa live a little bit uh in in more detail but hopefully you you really understand like that you know you've got to continue to prod and push and move and dare i say use the word manipulate your 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 prospects emotions um even though like look it's an interesting thing you know it's a funny thing i'll leave you with this and i've said this a couple times um lately over the last handful of weeks and so i might as well share with you guys and gals the most valuable uh group in our in our tribe um and that is this like i talk a heck of a lot right and i I think i might have even said this to you guys two weeks ago possibly that i talk a heck of a lot right about um about uh the whole intellectually interesting component of you know, of the idea, of the big idea behind your marketing funnel. I talk a lot about how you've got to present a rock-solid sales argument that is rational, that is logical, that is airtight, that is complete, that is, you know, A to Z. I talk a lot about that, right? And I drill that into you, you, you guys and gals, and I talk about how you've got to make claim, you know, your, your claims tied with proof elements and then your your benefits, right, the, the, the takeaways, right? And I drill that, that into you. But the thing that I never want you to lose sight of is that at the foundation of what it is that we're doing is we are um, we are moving people emotionally through the um, big believable specific promises that we are making. We're moving them emotionally, right? Emotionally, we are moving them through the big promises that we're making. All of the other things that we do, all the other things that we present are really there to support that, right? In other words, it's kind of like, look, the the way to really look at it is like, you know, we go through and we give this rock-solid sales argument. Why? So that they believe the promise and they believe that they can experience the promise so they let themselves go emotionally so they allow themselves to get you know wrapped up in that emotional roller coaster right they're not actively resisting what it is that we're saying they're not actively questioning it they're not actively doubting it right we we we're we're um we're convincing them right we're convincing them that it's okay to buy into this it's okay to allow yourself to get caught up emotionally in this that's why we're doing that we're not doing it simply to present a um a rational logical argument we're not going to try to debate them into buying right we're not going to try to simply factually prove our point we're trying to do that we're presenting a rock solid argument so that they again believe us and allow themselves to let go emotionally and it's that emotional ride 
that is going to move them to buy, right? It's the emotions that they experience when they allow themselves to get caught up in this picture that you're painting for them. Everything else is just to get them to buy into that, to get them to believe it, to get them to accept it, to get them to see themselves in there, to get them to ment- mentally visualize experiencing it, right? And so that's one of the big, one of the big things that I believe um, today is critical that is missing is the the logical part, the rational part, the sales argument part, the proof, right? They want to believe you, but they're more skeptical, more jaded than they've ever been before, right? They are more skeptical, uh, um, more jaded prospects than, than ever before because they have seen too many scams. They've seen people get ripped off. They've seen and experienced too many people, including themselves, buying a product, being promised X and not receiving X, Right, And so today, more so than ever, they need that intellectual, rational component to prove to them that they can experience the promise. However, however, that still only is there to support them, uh, uh, you know, to support the emotional drivers that get people to buy, right? The emotional, you're not, again, you're not going to logically, pure, on, on pure logic, get somebody to buy a refrigerator, right? Just purely logical. There is an emotional aspect to it that you need to make sure you, uh, you focus on it. <laughs>